Lynn, we just saw another exciting match from Life Coach, and I think uh, much to relief of the German fans that have stayed up late and are tuning in and still watching, he came out ahead. Yeah, I mean, fans all over the world, you can see that they're cheering for Life Coach because of what he represents. It's, it's the idea that Life Coach started off as a person who loved playing recreationally to challenge himself. He said it was an intellectual stimulation, right? Because Life Coach is a very successful person. He doesn't necessarily need to benefit off of Hearthstone's World Championships life-changing money. For him, he's incredibly you know, financially successful, so he's fine with that. Um, but for him, he, he really loves just competing the challenge of it. And as such, people love to see that pure joy and the, the raw emotion that he demonstrates when he's playing. Well, as someone who, who gets to talk to a lot of the players, do you have any indication what might be on the line for some of these other competitors? I mean, know Nias wants to make the money. I mean, he's got a college fund to start. Yeah, that's right. Nias, for anybody who was just watching, he did get eliminated. However, he also uh, just recently had a child. You know, he was he got uh, he was recently became a father, and I was I was trying to find a way to phrase it that was family friendly because uh, <laughs> we're trying to make sure we have a good show. Uh, so you know, Anais does have a child now, and it's one of those things that's a little bit sad to see him eliminated. But at the same time, this is a cool career. He also recently joined a team, and I think it's going to be awesome to see the support that he gets from this point forward. Absolutely. So many of the players that came out put in so much to this tournament, and I think a lot of them are finally experiencing that moment of payoff today. We saw it in Life Coach's face. We saw it in the matches earlier, and uh, this has been an exciting weekend for people who are trying to make a dream out of being a professional gamer, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think one of the things that people are looking at the Hearthstone World Championship, and they're looking at it as an opportunity to really play a game that they love and continue to go through this journey. And as such, they get to travel all over the place. We've been to Prague, we've been to San Francisco, we've been to the Philippines and China and all, all across the world. And we're going to continue to expand it as time goes on. So I'm looking forward to see now who's going to be a champion this year but over the next 10 years we see what firebat was able to do last year nowadays uh, firebat is an established player he's constant threat to any tournament he enters and he's also contributing to the community by doing all these big swiss tournaments and you know constantly casting and, and trying to take my job so you know firebat is doing a great job i really love his casting i love what he's doing for the community and i can't wait to see what the 2015 champion will do next year and for years to come Absolutely. The personalities you're seeing play here this weekend. This is certainly not the last time you're going to see any of them. Everyone contributes something different to the community, and they're so excited to be a part of the community with all you watching at home. So please give them your support. What's the hashtag where you can join the conversation, Dan? Uh, we can hashtag HWC2015. Let us know some of your favorite games. You can send screenshots. Uh, you can let us know who you're cheering for. And just generally just being able to engage with other people is all what Hearthstone's about. You know, the fireside gathering experience, you know, being able to meet players near you. The whole point is so that way you can interact because Hearthstone's open for everybody. So make sure to hashtag HWC 2015 and see what other people are saying. All right, guys, our next match is coming right up, so don't go anywhere. CX versus Nelio. Uh, it's going to be quite an entertaining match. Um, Nelio played a little bit earlier, and uh, he didn't uh, quite overtake um, his uh, his friendly rival, Hot Form. Yeah, he, he had a, a good match there, but uh, was not able to emerge victorious. Love CX similarly uh, fell yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, these two players, one of them will be eliminated after this game. Yeah, Nelio uh, was one of those players who, when we were first coming in, and we were you know doing our, our best to learn more about some of these players we'd never seen before, uh, Nelio is a very highly talked about player, uh, absolutely comes in here as one of the favorites from his region. So I'm curious to see if Nelio can kind of turn it around here and uh, advance to live another day. Yeah, well, we'll have to see. Uh, his lineup uh, did seem like a, a very good one. Um, it's just uh, it's just a bit hard to say. Um, was he playing? Yeah, he was playing the Secret Paladin with the with the double redemption. I believe both of these players were uh, both playing these that players? particular strategy. I don't think no, 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 so. Love CX, I believe, was playing the mid-range Paladin, if I remember correctly. I think Yesterday right. was all yeah, mid-range Paladin. Yeah, you're yeah. right, you're right. Um, so I think it's going to be a mid-range Paladin versus the Secret Paladin, mm -hmm. and the other two classes are different. So again, we're seeing this, this thing where they're playing completely different classes. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> there's the, there's the one the shared paladin, but they are very different strategies of paladin. Exactly. Decks, right? One's trying to extend the game. One's trying to close it out every single turn after <laughs> <Yeah>. three. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, like Hot Farm, I've actually played against uh, Nilio uh, several times on the ladder. He is he's a very friendly player. Uh, he you know, added me like Hot Farm was saying in his uh, discussion before. We had you know good conversation about the games. 
And it uh, looks like we're ready to get into those games yeah, right now. Yeah, it is going to be Battle of the Paladins indeed. Yeah. And now, uh, I, I always have to favor the mid-range Paladin just because of the coolness factor. But when we, <laughs> when we drop to a more realistic world, what can we expect out of this match? Well, that, one of those cards right there, I'm actually I'm not sure if we got the exact mulligan there, but I'm, I'd be kind of surprised he did choose to mulligan Iron Beak Owl. That's one of the cards that I actually really like in this matchup mm -hmm. uh, because so much of the threat of the Secret Paladin deck comes from things like Avenge and Blessing Kings, and the ability to neutralize that early on is quite strong. Yeah, so uh, Nilia's opening hand, and as a Secret Paladin, this is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. Contains a secret or two. Uh, I would... Imagine he's probably going to, if he's going to play one of these secrets, it's going to be Avenge over Competitive Spirit. Usually Competitive Spirit you want to play now when you have a bunch of minions on board, you expect Let them to survive. That's when you're going to kind of lead that damage push into your opponent. Uh, Lotheb is great to have around, uh, and Haunted Creeper, very natural turn to play. A lot of people talk about how there are, well, even when we talk about it, how there are these secrets that usually don't work. We usually refer to Redemption and Repentance. Actually, Competitive Spirit is kind of in that boat as well. Um, it's it's think. often very clunky at the start of the game, and when you do bring it up with Mysterious Challenger because your opponent is kind of prepared for that push on turn six, usually it just buffs maybe two creatures at most. It, 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 it's really powerful, but it seems a situation in which it, in which it arri arises to be really powerful is fairly rare. It's mostly a card that you, you want in your deck because you can just get an, basically for free off of Secret Challenger exactly. in the games where you don't draw it. This is kind of the drawback, the games wow. where you actually do draw it. It's Zombie Chow. Yeah, it's a little unusual. It uh, looks like Nilio has more of a mid-range direction to mm -hmm. his Secret Paladin deck here. Uh, Zombie Chow, one of the most efficient minions at fighting for the board, but because of its death rattle, not really great at pushing for damage. We have seen uh, this type of uh, Secret Paladin mm. where I think usually they remove one or both Divine Favors in favor of more mid-range cards because um, one aspect is you don't really need that much card draw if you're saturating your mana every turn until like eight. Part of it depends on the sort of opponent's decks you plan to play against, you think you're gonna run into. Uh, a card like Divine mm. Favor is great if you think you're gonna run into players who are running control decks like right. Control Warrior or Handlock or Freeze Mage, whereas if you expect more aggressive opponents, Zombie oh, Chow God. is generally gonna be more important in those matchups. Yeah, I think Neely was taking a little bit of time to consider there whether or not he wanted to play the Zombie Chow down or the Haunted Creeper. Obviously, if he plays it next turn, he can combo with the hero power and get a little more value. But every turn you wait on that zombie chow, it obviously gets a little bit weaker because, as you point out, the death rattle uh, heals the opponent or opposing hero. I think there's some possibility he's actually also just kind of taking his time to make it look like he has more options than he really does. We even saw him sort of tank on turn one whether he was going to play uh, Avenge or Competitive Spirit. And Competitive Spirit is a very weak uh, yep. secret to play early in the game. So I think it may be a little bit of a, of mind games here from Nilio. I actually feel that Nilio is in a lot of trouble already. He wasn't able to really extend his lead as the aggressor uh, at all. Uh, literally at all. His, his opponent is at 30, and he has a bigger board than him. Um, and it feels like you, you either have that push to develop your win condition, or you have the push on like turn 5, 6, 7 with uh, the very, very powerful minions that are in this deck, like Mysterious Challenger, like Dr. Boom. But it seems like if we get to that stage, Love CX already has the answer with the with, with the worst case scenario being resolved by Equality Consecrate. So it, it seems like Nelio is going to have a, a very big problem being able to close out this game. I mean, we do see that Love CX also, he has uh, both True Silver Champion and Cog Hammer in his hand. He has some strong uh, weapons he can use to deal with the board if it does sort of start to uh, to gum things up. Mm -hmm. You can also even look to coin out a Consecration here based on uh, how the Seeker plays out, mm -hmm. based on Avenge. Um, have to imagine that'll get saved for later. There are probably better times to use it, but he could also coin out the True Silver Champion, as you pointed out. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens here. He's going to Cog Hammer, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like the Cog Hammer. Um, it kind of sets up for a Consecration, even especially if it's Avenge, actually, because um, the weaker minion will burn the Divine Shield, the stronger minion would attack, and the stronger minion was just going to have uh, two or less health after that. Yeah. So this will uh, trigger the event, and it goes on the Haunted Creeper. That's uh, actually the better one of the two. It, it is, though it does mean that the 1-1 the one one isn't really a threat in itself. Uh, but being able to to attack here and clear off the Divine Shield and then kill the minion is reasonably strong. It's followed up with Shredder. I, I like this better. Uh, I mean, the, the other scenario, your Haunted Creeper, you have to kill it off it's to true. burn the Divine Shield. And then you, you basically have a board that loses the Consecrate. Mm -hmm. And now you actually don't. You, you get you get to keep those 1-1s uh, those one -ones unless your opponent takes four face damage, which, I mean, that's I think you're OK with that. Generally, you're really happy with that. But is it 30? And the life, the life issue is usually kind of should be seen as like a percentage. 
if, if you're if you're losing like a you know, what is that 12 percent of your life that's not really much it's i mean it's still a uh, a reasonable situation for for both players really neither player is in is in uh, uh, under dire straits here just yet Nilio gonna follow us up with a piloted shredder and that does make uh love cx's turn not necessarily great. He does have this Kaga Hammer he'd like to get a little bit more value out of, but his only real answer to that uh, that Shredder right now would be a True Silver Champion, or potentially attacking into it and casting the Consecration, but he probably doesn't want to do that. And we were talking about uh, how Anilio's Secret Paladin seems a little bit more mid-range in nature, and the Sludge Belcher really drives that point home. Oh, Sludge Belcher is not a minion you traditionally see in Secret Paladin, at least in most of the lists we see in North America or Europe. Uh, it's obviously a very defensive card, great against more aggressive lineups. Yep. So if you are expecting to see, you know, Face Hunter, uh, Zoo, some of those decks that are starting to rise again in popularity, uh, Sludge Belcher is very good. It's just obviously it's a little slower. We are seeing the consecration from Love CX here, uh, which will leave Neilio with the two spiders and whatever's in that shredder. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. A very thematically appropriate <laughs> Arjun Protector. Yeah. Uh, as far as the Belcher is concerned. Um, I think I think you're you're absolutely right about that. But actually, I've heard some of the even very aggressive ones are running like a one of Sludge Belcher right. because they just ignore your board. Yeah, and they're it, actually taking a lot of damage by the time turn five comes around. Mm. It's also great at protecting. It's, it's even great in that sense. It's also great at protecting your minions. Mm -hmm. You know, not exactly. not just your face, but being able to uh, preserve your minions on the board with the taunt of the Belcher allows you to just continue to go face with those minions. Mm -hmm. We saw that a lot actually during the uh, Undertaker Hunter era. Yep. We started to see the the mid range Hunter. Uh, at the time, running Sludge Belcher for exactly the same reasons you're talking about. Just, you can't get to these other minions, and it's so difficult to get through without a silence. Um, have to imagine, with Love CX Let having the think. True Silver, you know, the Cog Hammer out, that Sludge Belcher is the play here. Just no easy way for him to get by the Sludge Belcher, and uh, Nilio can start using those admittedly small minions to push damage. That said, uh, he's going to have him sub-20 health, so given his start, as you pointed out, Crip was a little bit slower, this is a pretty reasonable place yeah, for Nilio to be at. Yeah. And next turn, he potentially even has Lotheb into competitive spirit with a very strong board. It doesn't look like Love CX has really any great way to contest this. He just uses Consecration, so even with that equality, he's not able to to, to wipe the board. It, he, I think he really has to play uh, Juggler Peacekeeper here. Um, it, it, it really sucks to play a uh, Peacekeeper going into turn six <laughs> for a Secret Paladin, but you're starting to fall behind a lot, mm -hmm. and that's a big that's a bigger problem. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't really have any great on-curve plays. He doesn't have a Belcher of his own. He doesn't have you know, coin into, say, Sylvanas or something, which could potentially be a, uh, a valuable card here. But right now, yeah, I, I have to agree that it seems like maybe even just a quality, yeah, I, I think I would say quality juggler hero power attacker guy. Okay. He's going to coin out the well, hero looks thing. really confused. <laughs> Right, let's see what it hits here. Reporting for duty. All right. That's pretty good. But will we get the attack? Oh, well, okay. Sometimes the Belcher is it's one of those <laughs> cards where if, if the, the turn timer is running oh, out. Oh, dear. And you wow. see an actual just pump of his fist from Nilio oh, there as he picks up Mysterious Challenger on turn six. Only uh, only three secrets pulled out. He has already gone through the competitive spirit. Rather has it in his hand. Still pretty good value here. And you know, if you're playing Secret Paladin and you have no turn six... Uh, play going into turn six, and you could draw a turn six play, <laughs> you probably want Mysterious Challenger. And it looks like he's yeah. debating whether he <laughs> wants to clear off this minion. Uh, my guess is that he probably does just to protect his Noble Sacrifice. Yeah, Noble Sacrifice is pretty valuable against an empty board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. At that point, the only yeah, thing you're really right. expecting to see is the weapon. Wow, he wants to get the the one point of face damage in there. It could be that maybe he's uh, a bit scared of stacking too much attack on one minion. Sure. Yeah, it, it, does, it does allow him to... Uh, be more likely for a, an Avenge to go on go on uh, one of the one ones. He's not necessarily going to get uh, as high a percentage of his board eliminated by a possible Aldor Peacekeeper or Big Game Hunter. Mm -hmm. uh, we do see the Aldor Peacekeepers in uh, Love CX's hand, so if that had, he's, he's gonna had play gone, both of them. Yeah. there's no choice here. <laughs> but a lot of rules will have to be followed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's going to follow the Love, rules. He's right just now. a stickler for those rules. He's even, he's even got his like, hands class there. He's like, hey, why don't we all follow some rules? All right, well, Neil Yo is protecting his big board by playing Lothib. This is absolutely the best time to play a card like this. Of course, it doesn't actually matter right now, as uh, Love CX 
really exhausted his board clear potential. And I feel that's kind of why he's in this position, but at the same time, I can't really blame him for doing so because he had such suboptimal plays throughout those mm -hmm. mid-range turns. Yeah, Paladin, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, similar to Druid, aside from like Alder Peacekeeper, they require like four to four plus mana to kind of deal with board situations using stuff like Consecration, using Consecration equality combos and, and True Silver Champion. So uh, he was kind of on that plan where he only had like one thing he could do per turn. And he was facing the Avenged, uh, buffed, Haunted Creeper, as well as a Shredder. So he felt like he had to do something at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm right there with you. I'm not sure I really fault him for using the Consecration where he did. Yeah. It looks like Nilio is debating whether he wants to, to trade, basically trade off two damage or three damage rather on his challenger and the, uh, the defender to take down one of these. He does. Which Ooh. Oh. That's a draw. What timing? And that card is pretty good. <laughs> ah, one good turn. I mean, Nilio got his turn <laughs> six. Let Lepsiax get his turn seven. And he even has the Tyrion to follow up on turn eight, so. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as Lepsiax was running out of ways to answer the board, he's found uh, a lot of answers to his own board situation. Mm -hmm. I think here. Um, you're kind of scared of uh, of a redemption. Do you, do you do you weigh in redemption versus like a silence draw? Like I if there were no secrets, you'd absolutely want to kill the one three right. mysterious challenger. But uh, I guess you have to factor that in. That yeah, it's probably more there likely there is a redemption than a certainly, silence. Certainly, yeah. and the redemption does come come out and uh, bring back the spider. Could have been a disaster if you chose to attack mysterious challenger. Right. Uh, this is still going to be a lot of damage right here. Yeah, it's uh, pretty big. Oh, and there's a nice draw for Nilio as well. That Let's is uh, that is something you want to see here. Yeah, well, yeah. generally in Hearthstone, when you put a card in your deck that has a certain mana cost and you draw it exactly on that <laughs> mana crystal, it turns out to be a good turn. Yeah, it's it's yeah. weird how that works. But, uh, <laughs> but and now both, both players are kind of doing it. They're just, you know, both getting those right. cards they needed at exactly the right time. But also, it's if you're winning already and that happens to you, <laughs> you actually just win more because uh, having the initiative on the board, if you're both drawing the same, you're actually winning by more each time. It looks like uh, Love Six needs to take out just the Peacekeeper on Nelio's side, or rather vice versa. Nelio take, takes out Love Six Peacekeeper, drops his Tyrion, and uh, he's going to see a Tyrion coming out right back at him, I have to imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, wow. Love Six did not want that bot to go to face. <laughs> it is a pretty rough situation here. I think he actually may. No, he's not quite dead. Put your faith he is in at life. 2 HP. Yeah, he's, if, if Milio draws a silence effect or any sort of. Oh, oh like that. Or oh. that. Well, <laughs> Brian hoot, hoot. the Prophet Gibbler. <laughs> yes, deliver it to me, Al. I'm to the sorry, man. I'm sorry. If only he'd draw silence. A if fireball. only Jab could draw fireball. Oh, my God. How much did Milio <laughs> pay you? <laughs> The world just bends to my will. I can't help it, okay? Honestly, it's a, it's a real curse. I, I, I feel like uh, the secret paladin these days runs like one silence or zero silence. It is, it is actually not particularly common to see yeah. uh, even even one Iron Beak Owl in a lot of decks. And that was a, a very well-timed owl flying down from the forest to uh we'll Just goes up to Tyrion Ford like, like, hey, be quiet. <laughs> Speaking of drawing cards exactly when you need them, yeah. it's like, uh, turn, there's a lot of that. Turn nine is a great time to draw Iron Beak Owl because that's right when your opponent could have played Tyrion. Right, as it so happens. <laughs> so the Owl, though, being in Nilio's Secret Paladin deck doesn't actually surprise me as much when we saw the rest of what he was running. We right. saw that Sludge Belcher. It was kind of a, it was kind of a hybrid Secret Paladin mid-range uh, Paladin. Oh, man. It's the Hunter theme all over hybrid again. Hybrid Paladin. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, it starts with the mid-range. It goes to, like, the aggro. <laughs> it goes to, like, a different type of aggro. And now we have the hybrid. Yeah. I mean, it's... What have we made? <laughs> <laughs> it's this Frankenstein's monster of, of various secrets and bots and... I don't even know. Giant swords. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, Nelio does take the first game. Uh, of course, he is from the uh, Asia-Pacific region, and he had a few words to uh, tell us about what's going on on that side of the world. It was very exciting to compete in two qualifier, Southeast Asia and APAC, because I like to travel a lot. And I also had an advantage, because I was in the top eight in Southeast Asia standing, so I had two buys. I just had to play, win a few games to get into Service Service Agile Qualifier and a few more games to get into APAC. So that was not challenging at all. It was very exciting. And game two is underway. Um, one thing that I'm kind of happy out of that is that we get to see more mid-range Paladin. I, I think mid-range Paladin, Freeze Mage, and maybe Casino Mage have been my favorite decks of the tournament. Do you guys have any favorites? I mean, I've loved watching Jab's games with the Casino Mage deck. Yeah. It's it's so fun to, to watch. Uh, there's so many cool situations that come up, and uh, yeah, it's just a really neat deck. 
How about yourself? Uh, I'll take the unpopular answer and just say that I unabashedly have enjoyed seeing Face Hunter. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love a good smorkin. Uh, I don't know. It's. I think people don't understand when they play the deck. I, I'm not saying that all games are super complicated with Face Hunter, but you sometimes have to make a couple of decisions. I, I, True. I definitely think that the the difficulty of winning games, not not necessarily you know, uh, winning games. Just all the time. It can be pretty easy to just drag everything in your opponent's face. But winning tough games with Face Hunter is actually really rewarding. It's really yeah. interesting yeah. to try and maximize things, to try and figure out what you can play around. Let's look at this situation, though. We, we actually have what seems to be um, a, a Zoo Demon Lock, mm -hmm. and he has the, the Dream, the Void Caller Malganus. So do you think he'd ever keep that? He uh, didn't, I he guess. Did not. But I, I think against a Hunter, it's probably pretty appealing. It's difficult for the Hunter to be able to remove Malganus from the board if it does come, come down early on. Uh, the biggest threat is really that you need to have some way uh, to interact both with your opponent's early minions. You don't just get overrun before you can actually get your Void Color killed. And if your opponent does have a Freezing Track, uh, it can be difficult to actually ensure that your Void Caller does die. Yeah, that, that is absolutely one of the best counters in the game for Void Caller because Void Caller is usually a tempo drop. You kind of... Um, you invest in the Void Caller, <laughs> and if he gets silenced, you're in pretty bad shape. And if he gets freeze trapped, well, uh, things went horribly wrong. Yeah, that's not but, what you're looking for. But I, I, like we see the explosive trap in Elio's, in Elio's deck, and I actually don't even remember if there is a freeze trap. But you know, if, for, for Love CX, knowing that he'd be playing against Neely, I'm sure he, he would have done the notes, he would have done the studying. And by seeing the explosive trap, I think most likely there probably isn't a freeze trap in this deck. So if, the, if there wasn't a freeze trap, and you have the coin and the Void Color and Malganus. That seems so cool. <laughs> and, uh, Love CX very kindly takes three damage. Yeah, just, uh, just helping Nilio out here. What yeah. a nice guy. <laughs> uh, I want to point out, mid-range Hunter for a long time, the list, uh, I believe, was two Freezing Traps and one Explosive. To basically, you try to get them to play, or obviously, snake, around I Freezing Trap. Snake was pretty, pretty, it was, pretty uh, common as well. I think the third trap was very was very much variable. Mm. But I think in most standard lists that I saw, oh, anyway, it was one Explosive Trap uh, okay. as a mean, an extra means of board clear. So uh, it might just be that Nilio is running the, the three trap setup. Mm -hmm. um, and that works out pretty well against uh, you know, a situation where you, right, where you expect to see the explosive trap right. or the freezing trap and not the explosive trap. Ooh, and I wonder if Love 6 is going to get a little bit punished if he does decide to not uh, clear this or attempt to clear. Oh, dear. The punish. The, the yeah. And Love CX's face. He did uh, not he expect did not that. Know. So and you see a, a little bit of chuckle from Nelio. He, uh, <laughs> the pre-combat. Got him. Thanks. Yeah, that was <laughs> 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 but look at this turn, though. Like, we have nothing here. It's true. Oh, oh there's something. We can no. Play the <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> I'm just saying that one one trades out for that one. It's true. And you can mm -hmm. still hero power. Even board <laughs> trade. <laughs> That's two damage. You want to do that. <laughs> yep. You do want to do two damage. You might just want to hear up our ear. I mean, you could make the argument. You I, could certainly I have actually, the discussion. Yeah, I actually don't think it's unreasonable to play Timberwolf here because your opponent, right now your opponent has a minion in play. Uh, if you if you find, say, uh, a freezing trap, you may want to be able to develop a freezing trap. You don't want that minion to be in play. Uh, and if your opponent doesn't, uh, doesn't clear your minion, uh, you can Hound Master next turn. It's very likely he would, of course. But yeah, it's almost certain he would. But there's also a, a minion your opponent could have in play that uh, they could potentially one. buff with Defender Vargas mm -hmm. in, you know, in a couple of turns. I, I think that there's a lot of reasons to not play it, but I think it's, yeah, and it looks like Nilio agrees. He is just okay. he's just setting up, actually, with the Owl as well for that Hound Master next turn. Well, the main reason to not play it, of course, is Unleash the Hounds is just getting better and better as more people are playing aggressive decks. Mm -hmm. and. I think we've seen an anticipation by the players that most other players will play aggressive decks. So I, I think every Hunter deck has Double Unleash, and uh, Timberwolf just works so well with that. And here, Love CX with a lot of respect for the threat of Houndmaster. He saw, you know, that... It, it seemed pretty that obvious. That was pretty clear that there was a, uh, right. a, a Houndmaster coming down on Nilio's side. So he chooses Hound to use Master his coin. Houndmaster still come down. I mean, despite having a really expensive hand, mm -hmm. Love CX used his coin to cast that implosion. Yeah, Love CX is actually in a pretty good spot just because Nilio hasn't really had any follow up to that early web player. Right. Not only that, the Void Caller Malganus Doomguard Trio has returned. Yeah, he, is, he is an excellent <laughs> hand. Three, that was his opening hand. It was, it was. <laughs> they were not so soon cast to the side. They yeah. returned. Yeah, they weren't They weren't happy with uh, Love CX's decision to drop them. <laughs> when, if, if a demon wants something, what, like it be in your hand, it'll, it'll get it. It'll come right. back. There's some sort of pact going on there. Right, absolutely. And uh, unfortunately, Nilio really, I mean, as you said, he could just drop the Houndmaster. Uh, obviously, he feels bad. Oh, man. But maybe just. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. 
Rise got my back. Um, yeah, it's it's important though to have something on the board and continue to push things. And Lovesix very confidently plays on the void collar and he's like, why don't you see what's inside? Come on. Inside. What could it be? What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, juggler, juggler. <laughs> Juggler, juggler. As, as often as I seem to get juggler unleashed, I don't think I've ever been juggler, juggler unleashed. I don't think I've, <laughs> That's I've been fun. on the receiving now, end of that, like, massacre. <laughs> that is a, that is a very kind of like Malagos Arcane Missiles. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if he saved the Timberwolf mm -hmm. as well. Oh, juggler, yeah. juggler unleashed Timberwolf. Well, then, you, like, barely, ah. then you barely have any room for hounds. Like, you have so much of your Well, you can sack a hound and play the Timberwolf. It's true. It's mm -hmm. true. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that would assume there'd be creatures left on the other side of the board, which may may not be the case. So, Emilio, again, in kind of an awkward spot. He would have loved to have these jugglers oh, earlier. Wonderful. Even just last turn, playing juggler, juggler would have been much more attractive than, uh, than playing the Soundmaster. R really, I, I feel like Nelio is is in, in the spot where if he plays Lothop, he's kind of running out of cards. You don't want to play jugglers just as tempo cards. So you have to start going face. You, you just you just have to go for it as, as often as you possibly can from the yeah, stage. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult spot, but it, uh, it puts you in a position where you at least are uh, able to open up you know, the window of opportunity for you to, to, to maybe come back here. Uh, Nelio is in a, a really rough spot, but no. Oh. We're gonna see. I'm a little okay. He's gonna that surprises me. Yeah, I'm a little because if you get Melganus, oh, I guess you just don't get Melganus. All right. But if you did get Melganus, those one ones would have been uh, a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now Nelio is absolutely on the back foot. This is not a place Hunter really traditionally comes back from. This is uh, without at least Hunter's Mark. No, Hunter's I, Mark is a good way I to build it. I think you're actually creeper. fine. I think you have to play the, the Haunted Creeper and kill Command the 5-5. Five five. The Haunted Creeper is extremely unlikely to die. Like, wh why would someone lose like as much as 8 damage to just clear one attack creatures from this point, especially after you've seen a kill command? So so the double juggler Whoa. can actually clear the board. There's an implosion. <laughs> and oh. Love does have a juggler of his own. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Well, that sucks. <laughs> it's, also, it's also one of those things, I, I think I should clarify that what I meant when I said that was that oh. tossing in the kill command, mm -hmm. using all those resources to kind of deal wow. with the board, it's just it's hard Zoo, to is, the game, Zoo right? is good at, good at getting on the board. Yeah. Hunter's a little bit less good at that, and they want to have all those resources to do the damage, so. Love Six now with oh, here we go. A, a second one-point implosion that uh, this time with the juggler that failed. Oh, oh that's a good one. Juggler on juggler crime. Oh, oh no. all right. That was terrible. Good jugglers. They, they, yeah, they, they, they know who they work for. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Smork. I mean, they took out the first juggler, and then I they're mean, like, no more. As, as bad as that was, <laughs> it was still good enough. The Doomguard has to trade with a knife juggler mm -hmm. if he wants them off the board. And otherwise, they're again, they're very dangerous. You can't trust those knife jugglers. They were raised in a rough part of town. They throw knives for a living. Yeah. It's very dangerous. It's a bad time to, to be a person who dislikes having knives thrown at them. Is <laughs> are there are there good times? Uh, that feels like a conversation for after. <laughs> well, that is not a very good card. Oh, that is though. Dr. Well, see, Green that's a good time down. to have knives thrown at you when you're a boomba. That is true. Mad scientist first with with fewer targets. You kind of want you want that one to die rather than the raptor to uh, an unfortunate boomba attack. Yeah, but it is Doctor Boom who soaks up all the damage here. Love X's health total is getting pretty low. Yeah. He does have Malganus. He uh, does not have Malganus this turn. Oh, right. But he might have lethal this turn if uh, there, if the boom bots dragon. decide it's going to be that way. <laughs> oh, no, uh, no. No. It has not been decreed thus. <laughs> the boom bots will, uh, will stay their hand. And he's playing all these things because obviously next turn Malganus is coming down. Right, so it's that case where you know your turn nine is taken up and you know turn 10 is already decided. This is an interesting spot. Uh, Love CX debating whether he wants to go face for seven or clear that uh, that mess. Double scientist. one face. That's Arjun horrible. Horse Rider. That the is... first time I think we've seen it in this tournament. Uh, no, it's, it's been around before, but hasn't hasn't quite had a big impact. Here, not going to be good enough. No. I have to imagine he. Well, he's, he's going to get another turn. He will, though he'll get a turn while his opponent has a Malganus. In mm -hmm. play. That's not the kind of turn I like to take. <laughs> no, that's not. Uh, that's not strictly speaking a good turn. What? <laughs> what ridiculous quick shot op options might be available to Nelio here? Mm -hmm. Let's think about that. If Next Malganus turn? comes down, the the horse rider and um, and the mad scientist go face, which 
Oh no, they can't. You have to he, quick shot. Yeah, quick shot. Blood. Yeah, he he has he has to kill one of the two ones with the Argent Horse Rider and then go two face. So he has to put his opponent on five. Uh, and despite what Argent Horse Rider says, maybe you might want to be worried. <laughs> so it might be a good time to worry. Mm -hmm. I think you have to go face here. Yeah, for sure. So Malganus comes down. Quick shot into quick shot. And to kill command. Actually, that's just lethal. Now, Gannis oh. is actually worse than Direwolf Alpha. Oh, here. Direwolf, <laughs> Direwolf makes Alpha just. All right. Two damage. Well, good enough. CX does even it up. Maybe it was mid range hunter. Well, I had the, the uh, a pretty good start. Uh, it just the, the the mid range really felt short, and mm -hmm. I think the turning point was when he had to hound master nothing. Yeah, he had he really needed something better to do with his turn three and turn four. He, yeah. Uh, sort of ran out of options and didn't really have strong plays, in large part thanks to his opponent uh, choosing to coin Implosion mm -hmm. to take out just that one one. Yeah. Uh, even though he only got two imps off of it, didn't mm -hmm. get very lucky, it was still good enough to uh, to force some extremely suboptimal uh, turns from Nelio. That was a couple of, of you know, unfortunate turns and draws for Nelio, but we have to also look, Love CX, he had two two-point implosions and jugglers who just never hit what he wanted. So right. despite that, he was able to overcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and obviously it's a, it's National Cat Day, but yeah. uh, it was Dire Wolf Alpha. <laughs> that ended up That's winning the game it's for a Love dog. It's a yes. dog. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Don't trust cats. <laughs> All right, well, out of the remaining lineups, uh, <laughs> Nelio's, got, uh, Nelio's got the Hunter still. He wasn't quite able to close out that game. Uh, he's got the Warrior, and he's up against the Druid and the Midrange Paladin. Uh, fairly classical decks. We'll have to see uh, what what kind of iterations, as these players have tweaked most of these decks uh, so far. So this, I think, is the, the matchup Nelio was, was looking for against the Paladin. Uh, the the mid-range Paladin deck is extremely strong against Control Warrior. Uh, the Control Warrior deck is largely built around uh, eliminating all of the opponent's threats and sort of grinding them out of resources. And that just never happens and against Paladin. Paladin does not run out of resources, especially with... All right. Uh, well, we see a pretty, uh, pretty decent opener from um, from the hunter player here. The the web spinner into a turn two animal companion into the bow, and if a beast survives, he's got the uh, he's got the houndmaster. Yeah, for the uh, for the paladin player, this is also a pretty reasonable matchup, I have to say. Uh, Monster for battle allows you a lot of board control. Said so Huffer. Huffer's a good way to start turning this game to your favor. You might have to uh, play the Peacekeeper or the Cog Hammer here. With the True Silver Draw, I kind of like the Peacekeeper. But Peacekeeper is such a good answer for high main that you would consider saving it. I just feel that if, if you play greedy with a Peacekeeper here, it might be the start of uh, a really, really bad game. <laughs> yeah, the, the Peacekeeper is it, pretty important to deal with the, the late game threats. See. But, uh, ooh. Love CX is just going aggro. He is playing his muster for battle and heading to the face. It's, uh, well, it's not, you know, obviously he would like to get rid of the Huffer, but it wasn't like he could do too much to the Huffer. He could have taken another four damage by swinging into it. Oh, I'm not suggesting he should attack the right. Huffer. Right, yeah. <laughs> that, that, he could have played Cog Master and attacked Huffer, or Cog Hammer, rather. That's Cog true. Master couldn't play. It's not his hand at all. No. <laughs> he would need to put that in his deck first, but look at this. It's, uh, this is a lot like... Yeah, what it usually looks like. This is the type of hunter like. that I remember him playing <laughs> mid-range. Well, he's going to lose control of the board very quickly here. He just won't have it anymore. Uh, and he's going to have to start figuring out how to put that together as a mid-range hunter because generally, now face hunter, you just ignore this. You ignore, mm -hmm. you, you unleash the hounds, and then you just go face. You let the paladin trade, but the mid-range hunter doesn't have all these charge minions, so losing control of the board is pretty problematic. Well, I don't, I don't know how big of a loss it's going to be with the shredder coming down, followed by the web spinner houndmaster. Those are like it's, it's a power play on four, it's a power play on five, and it gives them a few turns to draw, um, you know, something to play after that. That's fair, but the the shredder is probably just going to get traded out, uh, and then so is the. But imagine the web. Well, it depends. Let's see it, what his turn it five It will deal like. some damage to Love CX if he does have to attack into it with the True Silver. Right. And uh, it looks like uh, Nilio is going to attack one of the Muster Tokens to try and ensure that it, it is uh, definitely getting some face damage in with that Shredder. I think it wouldn't have been too big of a deal to just do three face there. If the three dudes don't result in the Shredder, that seems like a decent scenario. And Love CX picks up Knife Juggler, which allows him to potentially play Juggle Muster this turn which is relatively powerful, though would open himself up pretty significantly to a possible unleash. unleash the hounds. Well, it's, it's turn five. It's true. 
Like, it, people who play ladder have nightmares <laughs> going into that turn. I mean, Let even me even just see. unleash the hounds if you do choose to play muster for battle this turn is, is pretty uh, is pretty rough. Mm -hmm. He can even just play juggler and hero power and save his muster for battle if he wants. Put this apple on your head. Well, yeah. oh, he juggler. does go with the cock hammer. Okay. It's, uh, obviously, wanting that uh, divine shield and taunt to land on the knife. Well, actually, no. Do you want it to land on the knife juggler, or do you want to protect the knife juggler? Well, there, oh, there's that the unleash. Would be unleashed. So if he had chosen to go with Muster for Battle, he would have been punished for it. Could be a Houndmaster Unleash, a well, Houndmaster has, Starving Buzzard. He's got the old school combo. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Starving Buzzard Unleash He's, the he's a few turns away nowadays. He could have played it on uh, on the uh, the old cost. But. Yeah. Who remembers uh, four mana draw your deck? <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty good, pretty good plan. I, pretty good plan. I played it was five mana. Was it? I think it was. was Unleash the Hounds was two. Two, yeah. Well, that, and then Starving Buzzard was... Unleash was moved to three, and then Buzzard was moved to five. Right. So at, at one time, it was four mana. Oh, that's correct, yeah. Yes. But I'm saying that when, when I started playing... You uh, win, Crib. You win another point. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the grand... Just don't invite Ben Bro to the trivia, <laughs> and I'm good. I can retain my championship title. Ben knows a lot about Oh, ourselves. there's another yes, Dread Scale. Dreadscale, pretty good against... No, this is absurdly good in this matchup. Yeah, it is. Well, J Dreadscale's actually great against the uh, the <laughs> recruits here. Yeah. Yeah, but he doesn't so have a good play this yeah, it's turn. It's not clear that, that he, he can afford to... He might to... have to just buzzard. He could, he could <laughs> either buzzard or uh, just play Houndmaster. I think he's going to play Houndmaster. Buzzard just dies to the cog hammer. And this at least... Yeah, that's right, that's right. At least forces your opponent to attack into it with something. Dreadscale, honestly, okay. Dreadscale... Great at dealing with recruits, uh, and at the same time, starving Buzzard into Unleash the Hounds. Yeah, great. He got some some pretty uh, pretty solid combo cards the, off the of his is, web spinners this game. I don't think he needs uh, life as much as he needs damage with a Paladin at 12 life and uh, oh certainly and kind of struggling a little bit right now. I feel like the the Let Juggler Unleash think. if it if it gets a good point in the game is going to be much stronger than drawing a few cards. Certainly, yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, what usually happens to the hunter in this match, the mid-range hunter anyway, is as it draws on, they just get like overrun. Mm -hmm. They don't really have an answer to it. They, we know Nelio is running the one explosive trap. Yeah, he's uh, he's actually got to start thinking about his uh, his HP now. Yeah, the, uh, the the juggle unleash. I think we may see it this turn. You see juggler on the screen right there. Uh, every every opponent uh, minion your opponent has, the unleash the hounds creates a uh, one one hound with charge. And then Knife Juggler deals one damage to a random enemy uh, for each of those things that come into play. So he does a lot of damage. Well, and like let's see where it goes. Good, good Knife Juggler. Oh, bad Juggler. Bad Juggler. <laughs> really bad Juggler. Well, yeah. with those Juggles, I feel like you just uh, get rid of that 6-2 just to so extend the game a mm -hmm. little bit more. It, yeah. Is he He's at risk of getting killed next turn, right? He doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. But this is this is pretty unfortunate for Nelio because Love CX does have that lay on hands Quickly. in hand, and not only is uh, is that going to increase his health total, but Love CX has the board presence and weapon that he can actually remove everything that Nelio has in play and then gain that additional eight health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh this is kind of the the end of the game for oh, the wow. mid range hunter. I'm surprised player. to see that attack. He wants to keep his peacekeeper alive rather than his. Uh, Shredder, so he wants a higher creature quantity now that he's been unleashed, perhaps? Yeah, it's possible. Or maybe he's just willing to take more damage. Face. Yeah, I, I, would have to, I would have to imagine that what he's looking to do is to just keep both his minions around and then just lay on hands. I would imagine he'd want to see what he drew first, unless he's going to kill the Shredder, but it looks like he chooses... Yeah. He chooses to just clear the minion. Using his health code as a resource goes to 12 with a pretty significant board here. And uh, Nelio's kind of off the board for now. Dreadscale, not super good because they're just... I mean, obviously we get rid of Alder Peacekeeper, but there's not a bunch of recruits to take advantage of, so... And here is Scar himself. Savannah Jaime comes down. It makes a huge impact, though. I mean, we talked about how the... Um, how the Hunter's behind on the board, but... Is he really? Uh, I would say yes. I mean, obviously now, but... Prior to yeah, that, so this load up is actually a, a huge, huge play here. It, it one off that, lethal. Yeah, well, it means that that uh, Nilio is unable to actually cast any combination of burn spells and use his hero power. Uh, Kill command would do five damage, and if he was able to use steady shot in the same turn, that would finish Love CX off. So if he was at ten mana, this would. Uh, yeah, if if yep. if Nilio Nilio is one damage or one mana off lethal here. 
I wonder if anything can be done with uh, all. I mean, th there, there's always some shredder combination. Like, I guess, I guess just simply Doomsayer is enough. Uh, yes, it would keep him alive. But I wonder if there's anything else. I don't. I mean, he can potentially. I mean, he he's dead to the weapon and any minion. I think he may just have to try and find a Doomsayer there. Is he going to juggle? All right, I, I buy it. He can juggle, attack into low step, get that off the board. But he has to get rid of every single minion. I think he needs like two into the Shredder and then plays Dreads. Yeah. That's a good start. No. That's, a, that's a worse start. That, he, needs, he needs to play both Dread Scale and Pilot of Shredder and have his opponent get a zero attack minion from the Pilot of Shredder. All right, let's see what happens. That's good enough. Nope, that is oh. not a zero attack minion. Very close, though. Yeah. Or, yeah. or actually, a one health minion. Yeah, one health minion would have done, done as well. So, yeah, loves TX with the mid range pilot will take game two. And now. Yeah, that was really close. That was actually yeah. closer than, than people might understand. Because it, it, certainly, if a bad card came out of that shredder and Murloc Knight would not have produced a charged Murloc, which would have happened it for always, sure. It by always the way. happens. Yes. I, I, I just have, have nightmares of, of, of old Murkai. Yeah. <laughs> but but if if somehow by some chance a charge murloc would not have popped up, uh, it actually felt like the hunter would have won that game. Yeah, yeah. I mean that was a very very close game, but uh, Love CX was able to come out on top with that mid range paladin, and now he just needs to win one game with his druid deck mm -hmm. to send Nelio home. And that that may not be too difficult. Uh, druid is uh, pretty bad against mid range hunter, but I think the inclusion of, of the explosive trap is a, a really big plus for the druid mm -hmm. because the druid struggles so much against freezing um but uh, the warrior actually struggles a little bit against druid in the general case so um you know it looks like love cx is uh, has quite a, an advantage here i mean if you even out the the two matches he's basically uh got to win yeah he's one gotta, of two coin flips you've just got to got to win one one game with druid and druid is a deck that can beat any deck it it can have those very very powerful starts with wild growth and innervate mm -hmm. and no matter what your opponent's doing it, it is able to pull off the win i also want to bring up uh Neely's mid mid-range hunter has been struggling a little, a little bit and in, in the two games we've seen it lose now in both situations it was forced to just play a hound master onto an empty board and this is a lot of why i don't like this card so much anymore in hunter decks uh shredder obviously great turn four play you just play it down it's completely fine uh, there are other things you can do with your deck to where you're not, you know, forced to rely on the beast synergy so much because a lot of times these days it's actually just very difficult to keep a beast on the board. Even Haunted Creeper, because so many, when you're playing against players of this caliber, mm -hmm. they understand what a Haunted Creeper means. I mean, and the players are also familiar with each other's deck lists. Players know that you have Houndmaster in the deck and they, they will sculpt their game plan around trying to neutralize that card. Right. Yeah. Well, one thing uh, some of us may not be too familiar with is uh, the origin of our names. And uh, speaking on that note, uh, Love CX has something to say about his. CX是陈潇,是一个模测,然后我之前就是比较的喜欢和关注这个 uh, 陈潇，如果赢得了布雷斯布雷斯康的冠军，我可能会呃更多的去留和请陈潇吃饭。Interesting. Yeah, some people want to use uh, BlizzCon as a vessel to buy their mom cars. Uh, some people want to use BlizzCon as a vessel to ask people on dates. Totally reasonable. Why not? <laughs> I mean, being a, saying that you're the Hearthstone World Champion uh, can only help. Yeah. Yeah. And you get like a trophy out of that, right? You just bring the trophy with you, yeah. when, you when you pop the question? <laughs> no, you just bring the trophy with you everywhere. Yeah, no, it's you're like, wa hey, walking around. I'm the champion. If you're walking around with a, tro a trophy, and especially a trophy and a giant novelty check, mm -hmm. everyone wants to be your friend. Yeah, you can even go grocery shopping. It's like, are you sure you want to charge me that much? <laughs> just hold up yes, the trophy. Yes, they do. They see the check. They're like, I know you can afford it. <laughs> like, That's a really cool trophy, but actually that price is fine. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> can. All right, well, uh, still quite a road to go until that trophy is acquired by either of these players. In fact, um, Nelio is uh, facing elimination here. Uh, this is do or die with the mid-range hunter that has been struggling quite a bit so far in the last few games. And this opening hand from Nelio doesn't have anything he's looking for. He really wants to find uh, some of those early game minions so he's able to get on the board quickly and start pressuring the druid before it is able to play its larger minions. Yeah, we've seen uh, the hunters uh, so far this tournament have been kind of each bringing what they think gives them the, the best chance Don't to have that early start. Uh, 
Jabs Hunter we've seen has King's Elec, which is two mana, three, two beast, has the ability to possibly, you know, gain you a card via winning a Joust. Uh, and we've seen other players kind of doing different things. And thus far, it feels like Nelio's early game hasn't really panned out the way he needs it to. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that's just a, a way, the way his deck is constructed. If it's just maybe like he has not been getting those cards in the early game. Not really sure what's going on, but yeah, he needs to have a little bit of a stronger opening. And, you know, for him, Love CX's hand, no Wild Growth, no Innervate, no Dernassus Aspirin. So he's got a real chance here to get on the board before the Druid gets going. Yeah, and that's that's where the Druid just can't keep up because the the Druid's mm -hmm. weak point is coming back from a losing situation. That Druid is, is particularly poor at, at dealing with multiple big health minions. Right. Uh, if you're able to get, say, uh, Animal Companion, get Misha. You know, the, the, the four health on that is uh, a huge, huge, uh, Huge, hugely difficult thing for the dude to deal with without something like swipe, yeah. and that's just trading down in mana, and, and you're just going to keep getting damage from the rest of the, what the, the hunter has in play. One thought I had about the King's Elec, just just before we get too distant from that topic, it, it, it is a really cool card, but you kind of have to design your deck uh, around it. Like, you have to include cards like Dr. Boom, you, you, need, you need the double high main, you, you kind of need those late game cards, because um, the reason it works in Hunter is if you're going to get like a two drop, you're, you're going to lose the Joust anyway. But the strength of Hunter is most of the mid range are spells, so they don't really get brought into the Joust mechanic. Right. And when, when you win the Joust, you, you win it either you're going to lose it or you're going to win it in a big way. And uh, so it, it's a really cool card. And it, so far, it has worked out for Jeb. I believe the one time he played it, he pulled a Lothab, which turned out to be pretty decent in that game. Yeah, King's Elec, very oh, solid. Uh, loves the X now. He drew the Wild Growth on the last turn. And he went ahead and coined it out, and I like that he did that because now he has the flexibility to play Wrath mm -hmm. if a minion comes down. And as we pointed out, you know, it, this druid uh, specifically because it, or this uh, this hand for Love CX was not loaded with mana ram, so he did get his one wild growth. But he needs to be able to keep the board clear while he gets into those shredders, stuff like Sylvanas, that'll allow him to kind of win the board from the hunter. Yeah, the. The average player looking at that opening hand might think, okay, well, I can play my Wild Growth on two and then play Shredder on, on three and then maybe coin out Sylvanas on my fourth turn. Right. Uh, but knowing that you're playing against an aggressive deck like Hunter, you really want to give yourself the opportunity to actually use your, your second turn for a removal effect rather than just trying to maximize your ramp. You need to, to ensure that you don't fall behind. Now, the really interesting thing is that... Uh uh, a more new player would have actually fared a bit better in this situation. <laughs> uh, sometimes a suboptimal play in Hearthstone turns out to be the better one, but uh, usually not. Yeah, here it turns out that... Uh, yeah, that if you had Wild Growth and it yeah, played no. Sylvanas uh, two turns early, and then play like a Shredder with a Wrath mm -hmm. afterwards, or in place of Sylvanas, it probably would have worked out better, actually. Yeah, here, here Love CX uh, runs in a situation where Nelio has the, the Haunted Creeper, which is a, a minion that Wrath is not particularly good at removing. <laughs> I will give you one extra damage. <laughs> yeah, and this is uh, this is gonna work out pretty handsomely for mm -hmm. Neil. Have to imagine the animal, one of the animal companions, or eh, animal companions is going to come out. Which one? Uh, I'm saying the one on the right. But wh Sounds which like you're a bit stoked it, for BlizzCon. I think, I think the one on the left, the one on the left is Misha. The one on the right is Huffer. Uh, mm. I usually want to trust you on these. All right, things, let's, let's play the guessing game. I'm oh. gonna, uh, Liak. No, but it, but which one? Which mm. one's which? They're both Liak. They're yeah. both. They're all Huffer. Ooh. It, I mean, it's always Huffer, but... Right. But I'm saying, if he plays one on the left, it's going to be Misha. If he plays one on the right, it's going to be Huffer. Quickly. Okay. Uh, I say Huffer regardless. It's just going to be... Oh, it was Huffer. Always Hi. Huffer. Trust, trust, trust. Wow. No, there's I'm, there's I, only one loser here, I'm, and I'm, it's me. I'm colorblind. <laughs> I, I can't tell which side is right and left. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, what? what? That, that's how that works? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that. Yeah, Dragon <laughs> Master. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, uh, by rolling Huffer, Love CX uh, was guaranteed to get Keeper of the Grove. Yeah. Uh, Keeper of the Grove is actually not Savage Combatant, but he's been a pretty Savage Combatant in this tournament. Actually, we have not seen a single Savage Combatant in this I don't tournament. Think so. I don't think so. No, we saw a lot of that in round of 40, and we were remarking uh, when we were casting America's Championship that you know the card had been cut, mm -hmm. it seemed like, from pretty much all of the decks. Mm -hmm. uh, but Such for a cool card, though. For round of 40, it was all over the place. You just, mm -hmm. yeah. Well. So it looks like Nelio is debating whether he wants to play... Uh, Animal Companion, maybe Horse Rider. I have to imagine that Animal Companion is a stronger play here. We have seen Nelio taking his time with each of his turns, even if there is a relatively straightforward play. Uh, if Whether he's planning out his future turns, whether he is trying to give his opponent the illusion that he has more decisions than he does, uh, either way, it's, Quickly. it's uh, going to the rope right here, and is it always Huffer? Uh, it, it is. is it is, in fact, I told always, you, you it told, is always They were both Huffers. Your, your prophecies are stronger than mine this game. I think only, this is actually a very good situation, actually, because 
Um, this sets up a, a game mode where with two kill commands and unleash, the druid is is going to be under a lot of threat the whole game, and it makes it so the druid will probably have to just play out his hand as fast as possible, and th that unleash kind of at that stage often will close out the game. But here it looks like you, you, know, you may very well just have to use a, a kill command to just get through that bear. Um, you're also at 30 HP. I think the bow might not be the worst thing. Mm -hmm. Would you just bow and attack into the bear in hero yep. power? Okay. I can see that. I think I prefer, personally, kill command and then trade in would be haunted creeper and then just hero powering. Uh, it's cleaner. You take less damage because as a hunter, a lot of the way, you know, one of the ways you lose this is actually just taking chip damage through clearing things with your bow, right. and then you eventually just get comboed down, so. Yeah, I mean, if, you're, if you effectively, if you play the eagle horn bow and attack the bear, you're effectively committing to taking 12 damage from the bear. Well, I think you'd, you'd clean up with the Argent Horse Rider next turn. But yeah. So, looks like then you decide to kill command Goes and kill take command. the bear down. Leaves it over to zero power, putting Love CX to 18 health. And he will next turn. Uh, he's got, obviously, all three mana cards in hand. So he can combo two of them, assuming he doesn't draw something like a high main off the top, which is really what he would love to see here uh, after seeing Certainly. one Keeper of the Grove. And Love CX is kind of, uh, kind of had like not so great plays here. Like usually on six mana, you expect to do more than play a Sylvanas into two, two, into two one ones or to play a Shredder in hero power. And you kind of feel like you should be doing more on six mana than that. I mean, six mana is, is typically the uh, the turn that the Druid curve often takes off. There's not mm -hmm. that many six drops in the Druid decks, usually maybe Sylvanas, maybe Emperor. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, he, he is definitely a little behind here and needs to try to catch up. He could, if he, if he really wanted to, he could cycle Wrath and take a look at his next draw, maybe then Hero Power and use that Wild Curve. I feel like against a player who you know has Savannah High Main, saving Wrath to hit your own Sylvanas kind of sets up a way where you can manipulate a win condition. That's possible, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I think right here Sylvanas feels good to me. Because um, at this point, Nilio is kind of at the point where he has to start making the decision whether he's going to do the trades or he's going to just start going for face damage. And based on what's in his hand, I personally would like to see him just go on the offensive here. Absolutely. And just start really trying to you know mow him down. Uh, he's got the bow. He's got the horse rider. He can start going face, and then he's got the ha or the unleash the hounds if more minions come down. And you've already and seen one through his claw, right? Based so. on his hero portrait, I'd like to see him going face. Uh, <laughs> that's an insensitive comment. Not all hunters <laughs> go face. Uh, some hunters like to trade. Some hunters like to build boards, Brian. What is what is that? I don't know. Do? I don't know if <laughs> some hunters <laughs> like to trade. I think some hunters build their deck to trade and are too <laughs> pleased about it in the end. I mean, I'm just saying. I personally enjoy going face, but I know some hunters who, you know. Like doing other things. Okay. On their Saturdays, they're out and about, they're doing stuff. Yeah. They occasionally like lock things, maybe load them up. You know. Uh, I don't think any hunters are currently locking or loading things. But, uh, there, there may be a future where more locking and loading occurs. Yeah. All right. Well, he could have killed the Sylvanas, but uh, it does seem pretty inefficient. So the uh, the, the face play, uh, I just I just think sets up a, a more likely win condition. Yeah. Yeah. He just goes brings that Love CX down to just eleven. And uh, Nelio still at 30 means that that Savage Roar is not really much of a threat. I, uh, I, I'm curious to see if we will see Love CX just heal himself with Ancient of Lore. He is definitely getting into that scary zone of health, with, especially when he doesn't have any taunt minions in play. I think anytime you're sub 20 health against a hunter, the hunter kind of smells blood in the water. And it's just like, you know what? Yeah. I'm just going to start hitting you with my bow. I'm going to hit you with spiders and stuff. <laughs> see what happens. That looked like a heal to me. Yeah, yep. yep. absolutely. So. And then Sylvanas attacking a spider is really not what you want to be doing with it. So uh, Nilio has six damage on the board. He can does not have a beast for his kill command, but he could unleash. I think you, you want to save the juggler unleash kill command combo for next turn, perhaps. Um, I think this mm -hmm. turn you just play the charge minion hero power and then face again. I can see that. I, I don't think you're at much risk from really anything. Even if you get like innervate comboed, I believe that's 28. I think I would actually just play down the juggler here. Um, I think I would juggler, but horse rider. The juggler could enable a trigger for Sylvanas, which might end badly, wouldn't it? Right, it's a risk. It's a risk you take. And then the thing is, next turn you're going to be on 8 mana. So you could kill command, Unleash a Hound's kill command, hero power. Uh, so it's a risk. We'll see what happens here. Okay, no no punish. Okay. So he had a 33% chance to get punished for that play. 
He didn't have to imagine now. It's just time to... save a 100% chance to go face. 30% uh, chance to go face. I was going to say, if this, if this were a weather forecast, we're like, <laughs> strong chance of face up in this region. <laughs> big, we got a, we got a big high Rexar system, system yeah. coming in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Left CX can clear, but it, it looks like he, uh, he will not have uh, a successful end from that. Uh, and it does involve wrathing Sylvanas for one and hero powering the 1-1 one, one down, I believe which forces the mind control on the 2-1 charge, and with that and the 5-4 clearing the other one. I think he's still dead. Yes, yes. he's still dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you said a lot of math there, but the only math I know is that... It's a cool clear. It is a very cool clear, and I, I can't wait to see it. I think we will see. I think that's just his best chance, so... It's... You know, he has no taunts. Uh, he could cycle into, like, maybe a Druid of the Claw, or... Uh, yeah, I think it pretty much has to be Druid of the Claw. No, because... He's going to hear power first here. Yeah. It may have been a better idea to attack the 1-1 one, one with the 5-4 just in case he would try uh, the the claw. We were talking about this earlier uh, in one of the other matches about the fact that uh, people have been choosing, a lot of people have been choosing Wolf Rider over Argent Horse Rider. This right here is why I love Argent Horse oh, yeah. Rider. Lower damage, but it's so much more annoying to try to get off the board. So you usually end up getting a second swing with it, which ends up being more damage. Or you can use it to trade into something like a Knife Juggler in the early game to get board control. But that is going to... Do it, Nilio. Going to unleash kill command, and Doesn't that's mean going to kill to... command. The, the, the Houndmaster. Oh, is it not? Enough? No, it's actually one off. <laughs> so he's going to go ahead and type the series with uh, Love CX and finally get that win on his hunter. Yeah. It all panned out. The Druid had kind of a slow start. I mean, N Nilio stays alive. More importantly, yep. I mean, uh, Nilio was on the verge of elimination based on that game, and uh, he takes it. And it, it, it wasn't that uh, that far away of, of a victory. Uh, I mean, that could have gone easily both ways there. Yeah, we had a couple of close games the past two uh, past two games, and uh, you know, this is a very close series. They're going to game five. Yeah, and uh, Nilio still has uh, another little speed bump here. I mean, that's 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 Druid and your warrior. Uh, you'd rather beat the Druid. Generally speaking, the the Druid deck, because of the mana ramp into some of the uh, the large minions, uh, able to punish the warrior for using its life total as a resource, and then also just Ancient of Lore. You're, right. The the warrior deck is revolves so heavily around exhausting your resources that Ancient of Lore allows you to reload, refill the board, and eventually put the warrior in a position where you're able to beat them with the Force of Nature Savage or a combo. I also feel Sylvanas is just a tech choice to just intentionally further punish Control Warrior. Yeah, the, the warrior does often end up trying to generate these board states with these big minions, and Sylvanas can make it really difficult for them to ever get ahead with those. Yeah, right. it just it just counterfeits so many plays. Like, mm -hmm. the open board Sylvanas often is, is not a very good play, but against warrior, it just prevents almost any relevant creature from being played. Uh, we even see a Harrison Jones in Amelia's warrior deck, and that is going to just be a 5-4 five, for 5. What comes down is Alfurion does not wield weapons unless you count claws. Hey, the game is not. <laughs> we see Love CX uh, keep the Ancient of Lore in his opening hand along with Wild Growth and Innervate, recognizing just how important that card is to his chances of victory in this match. Well, he is able, to, if, if he decides to get a slow start, he can Wild Growth without coining on mm -hmm. turn two, and then on turn three, he can actually play the Ancient of Lore with the coin Innervate. Yeah. We see uh, Nilia's no. hand is pretty clunky. It is, it is not the best here. He has two copies of Death Spite, a very strong weapon, uh, but he really wants to have something to do in the earlier turns. Well, Death Spite is often a very important card. The The only issue with this Warrior Hand is it... it all, all the times you play Druid and you lost to a turn one Darnassus, you're like, <laughs> where is my Fiery War Axe? <laughs> That's that's really the only thing here. Uh, the Fire War X just needs to be drawn against that, but Left CX doesn't have that. Right. Uh, the best answer to ramp often is the Death Spite, in fact. All right, so the Force of Nature that Left CX picks up here, not something he's going to be looking to play anytime soon, and uh, he just passes the turn back. That's a bad card. That's not something Nelio is going to be excited about. Uh, I think we've only seen Dr. Boom out of Love CX uh, right. in terms of big game hunter targets. We saw a Ragnaros from Life Coach earlier. That That is an unusual tech choice, yes. though. Ragnaros uh, has mostly phased out. On one hand, uh, there are what often now? more powerful choices for late game more recently. On the other, people are just choosing not to play much late game at all. Mm -hmm. Plus, Ragnaros is really good in metas where people aren't running like stickier minions, but with Shredder, with Haunted Creeper being so prevalent, Ragnaros hits those and it kind of doesn't really matter. And also much, just against so. Paladins. Against yeah. Paladins with, with mm -hmm. their hero power with Muster for Battle, being able to fill the board with small minions makes Ragnaros much less effective. It's very good uh, against opponents who have single big minions, but not so much against full boards. But yeah. uh, no Ragnaros here. We're only on turn two, and Nilio is <laughs> role-playing life coach, I guess. 
waiting so long to decide to just armor up and pass. Um, I think he's considering his options for his next few turns. He might be thinking what he'd want to draw in, in, from shield block to play on five, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, I, I've tend to notice too when I watch Life Coach, as much as uh, it's it's kind of fashionable to, to point out the whole rope coach thing, he oftentimes will look at those turns as kind of a roadmap for what he wants oh. to do in the long term. And Absolutely. when you're when you're on like turn one or two and there's not much to do, at the very least, you have a lot of time to think about how you want to fashion your game plan. Well, in particular, a, a player who does as much uh, thinking ahead and in as many calculations as Life Coach, you only get so much time per turn. So if you're able to spend your turns where you don't have much to do and you don't have much to think about for that what turn, now? planning ahead and thinking, okay, well, this is what I want to do this turn. This is what I want to do that next turn. If I draw this, I'm going to do this. So it, it, it gives you the opportunity to to use that resource. Your, your time is a limited resource that you have in Hearthstone. And uh, if you are a player who, who uses a lot of it, you want to maximize where you can find it. How does this uh, situation look for you? Um, if, if you play the Acolyte, you get a better no. tempo turn. Even if you get silenced, it doesn't feel like that bad of a situation because you counter the Keeper with your weapon and then you're threatening six damage into five mana, so it's perfect to kill a Druid of the Claw. I, I like playing Acolyte mostly because of the uh, just development in your board. In many cases, you'll want to save Shield Block to combo with Shield Slam. Uh, yep. Shield Slam is one of the best cards in the Warrior deck against Druid because it allows you to remove big minions for just one mana. Uh, but if the Druid is able to put a lot of pressure on you, uh, it can be very difficult to use it effectively. But Shield Block and Shield Maiden are cards that allow you to do that even when you're under pressure. And speaking of pressure, Love CX could right now just put out the Ancient of Lore, uh, which it looks like exactly I, what he's going to yeah, do. I, right now, his, his hand, he had a pretty pretty exciting opening hand, but he is really nothing has... Dr. Boom right now, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dr. Boom! Dr. Boom! Still pretty... The uh, the uh, Ancient is still pretty good. Uh, those are some horrible draws from Love CX. Yes, they are. He is, he is really looking to pick up something like a Druid to the Claw next turn. Uh, I think there's a very good chance we'll see Nilio just send in the Acolyte to its death and death spite that uh, that ancient down. I have to say that if it was Doctor Broom, I think it was, it would have been probably the only game I've ever seen that playing Doctor Broom loses you the game on turn four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, those games are kind of hard to Acolyte come by. draws at least two cards, probably deals with both Boom bots, and you get a free <laughs> kill on Doctor Broom with BGH. Right? It would have been it would have been pretty <laughs> a pretty rough spot for the good doctor. Amazingly bad. <laughs> is he such a good doctor? Is he what? Yeah, he's kind of malevolent. He's balanced after all. Well, he's just more that he looks malevolent in his picture. He's mm -hmm. uh he's got the hood, he's laughing. <laughs> it's not usually a sign of a good guy. It's also usually not the sign of a good guy that they're used for target practice in a quest line in World of Warcraft. Yeah, I mean that's fair. Bash is a good pickup to have. Yeah, so Love CX is Ancient Lore. He was definitely looking for kind of meteor threats. You know, he wanted he wanted the shredders, kind of the Thor or he something. Wanted, he wanted threats at all. He just drew removal spells. There, there that's go. what he was looking for. So the Ancient of Lore got him closer it to did, the Druid of the Claw. It did. And even, even if the <laughs> the cards he immediately draws aren't those, it, uh, it definitely digs him deeper and finds what he needs. Right. And it probably feels pretty good to play down the, the Druid of the Claw here, since Druid of the Claw in bear form will have six health, uh, which means that something else is going to have to happen for Nelia to get rid of it. Whether it be an execute, a bash, it's not going to feel good no matter what Nilio does, because he, he's wasting a resource potentially. I think we we'll, might see the shield block armor smith. I think your hand is just a bit clunky right now, and it feels bad to waste a shield block. But from this stage in the game, it's very difficult to actually play a shield block. What now? Doesn't feel no. It doesn't feel good. I completely agree with you there. <laughs> well, and, and unfortunately, they, as a warrior, you can clear this. There, that druid of the claw is not going to live. But at the same time, it's kind of like, what's the least cringe removal option? Um, yeah, I just think bash maybe. What now? I just feel that with with the activated death spite, basically on its last charge and the execute, you want to save that for a huge tempo swing. No, I mean that's fair. That's a pretty good fair option. Um, let's see. So he, I think bash execute. So yeah, I, oh. he he had okay. to do on that one. Crip save the save the death spite charge. But without the execute, it's not as valuable as the funny thing. Right. So you kind of like halfway went with your right. suggestion. But now Love CX, he's he's got nothing to do. He's got a, a fistful of spells, and that's really not where you want to oh, be. Oh no, we we've actually seen this play earlier <laughs> oh, in the have. tournament. We have seen the force of the tempo, force of nature yep. face. This this just reminds me of uh, Sonari's ability in in, in Warcraft Three, where he spawns a bunch of treants and they do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, six damage. <laughs> 
not it nothing. Is, it is not nothing, but it is uh, a turn and a half way, uh, of armoring up when Justicar Trueheart comes down. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, or just a turn and oh, play it on turn six, even, on turn ten. He's thinking about just wild growthing. Hmm. I mean, he <laughs> he has no good plays this turn. He could. <laughs> I wouldn't even I wouldn't even think it was horrible for him to just play Big Game Hunter and right. cycle right. Wrath on it. Because uh, no, that, that <laughs> no, sounds bad. No, that's extreme, Brian. I, it, it, I it, think, it is I extreme. Think wild. Look. Right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Nilio's face. <laughs> Nilio is probably very concerned now that Love CX has happened onto something he didn't think about. <laughs> He's <laughs> about to him. take like Look 25 damage. He's like, I don't know. He's this, like, I don't even know what's going that's on. That's the this sort game. of thing that's either great for you yeah. or terrible. We need for to like you. rent a supercomputer. <laughs> He's, so much damage. His yeah. He's like, is there something that could kill me? Am what's I dead? happening? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Love CX super cool though. He's got a plan here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, his plan is to reduce his opponent's health to zero. I mean, that's how you win. Duh. At, at, at the same time, you know, <laughs> if you play just a card true hard here, you help your opponent by giving him a play. Ooh. Because if, if swipe was his best play last turn, there's some like really weird thing that's gonna happen I mean, to it. Nilio has to be thinking that there's something like double combo. That's you know like like the the other innervate and force of nature double savage roll or something that right. that, that uh, love CX is just sort of sending damage to his face right here to preserve mana over the next few turns. I feel like if you expect thunder removal, the sludge belcher might be a little bit better at receiving it. It's it's true, but this this sets up to you play this this turn, then you play Sludge Belcher, and then use your hero power to gain four armor next turn. Just a much more efficient use of your resources overall over mm -hmm. the course of the two turns. So on the plus side, we were talking earlier about how Brawl is a really good answer to Shade of Naxxramas, but if you never play another minion because you never draw them and all you draw is spells, <laughs> that Shade is actually pretty invulnerable. <laughs> Can't, can't fight with anyone who's not there. <laughs> yep. There's nobody to brawl with. Just Shade <laughs> sitting on the board all alone like, hello? Yep. Hello? Anybody? Well, a, a Fiery War Nox X draw. Is mine, okay? <laughs> yeah. No one else is allowed Fiery in. Fiery War X draw would have killed the Shade here. Uh, it could, could have. No. Yes. Well, would have and could have are different Yes. Things. <laughs> Very different in this case. Uh, I, I have to imagine Nilio is going to go with Sludge Belcher plus either Armorsmith or just tank up this turn. Yeah, actually, uh, Armorsmith is often a play that you'd make behind a Sludge Belcher over an Armor Up, but right. now that Armor Up is four, it that is decision tanker. is a lot tougher. It right? is, yeah. yeah. I think the play when you are against a Druid, and the Druid is giving you the good fortune of not just beating you up from like turn three on, you owe it to them to tank up every single turn <laughs> and really say thank you for this. Yeah, you, have, you have given me the opportunity to... And, and now, counter swipe. That swipe, just forget it ever happened. Bye, swipe. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Naxxramas uh, no longer belongs to specifically just Shade. It also belongs to Sludge Belcher. And Dr. Boom. <laughs> he's invading Naxxramas. He's, he's looking for somewhere else to do his I appreciate how this is actually a Stranglethorn Veil board, but we've just decided this is now Naxxramas. Well, uh, that's, what, that's what the Shade said, you know? Well, he's not saying this has to be Naxxramas. Nax he is just he's objectively just letting everyone know. Just informing people as to the facts of the situation. If you find Naxxramas, it's actually mine. Please return it to me. <laughs> I am its owner. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the play here. Um, no, let's talk about your, your, your BGH. <laughs> your BGH really doesn't doesn't have many targets besides this Doctor Boom. So, even though you have uh, more greedy plays to make, and often it's fun to play greedy against the Druid that obviously has a terrible hand, um, you, you probably just want to play down the Armorsmith attack face BGH mm -hmm. afterwards. He does theoretically have the opportunity to use Berengen to kill the Shade this turn. Uh, because you can attack phase, deal one damage true. with the death rattle, and then play the Baron Geddon to remove the shade. Uh, well, he, or he can attack the Doctor Boom to yeah. clear the board with the. Geddon. That's true. Yeah, that's also an option. He chooses not to go with that though. Oh, it looks like he's not attacking with Black Master. Correct sequencing, because much like the Azure Drake, the big game hunter is the natural prey <laughs> yes. of the Boombot. I think he's probably the, the, the most killed minion by Boombot, right? No, I, I'm sure Silverhand Recruit might be. Boombots are very loyal. I gotta to find their that out. I, I have to know. <laughs> you wanna know? I have to is, know. What is the minion that has died the most? I know the, it's the Azure Drake. I don't even have to look. Azure, Azure Drake's not even in every deck, but it's I just, just know. It's not played it. enough, though. But, but when it is, I think you're right. You have to you have to factor in how frequently you play against the card. Sure, right? but 100 percent of the time. Absolutely. As your Drake We're dies with you. to Boombots. We're with okay, you on good. that. That's just it's, a fact. I don't sound like a paranoid like no. conspiracy nut anymore. It's just <laughs> science, okay? It's, it's just science, exactly. Ooh, all that armor. Yeah, I mean, Love Six is already in a terrible, terrible position here, and uh, he's just looking to try to at least get the board back. 
Yeah, if you can start getting the board back, it's not as if Emilio has one. a ton of cards. And as I said earlier, Druid's not on the same win table. Oh. Nope. That was not the statistic. I mean, if that was an Azure Drake. Yeah. yeah. He would actually have one health. Maybe, that, have died. maybe that bomb was confused because the Armorsmith had four health. So he's like, is that you, Azure Drake? <laughs> <laughs> and then he actually opened the door. And it's like, no, no, OK. Only That's why I only I'll do only three. Do three. Yeah. I'll only do three. The, uh, the well, role play passive experience. shield maiden here seems uh, seems pretty fair. I mean, this this armor is going to start stacking up like crazy. Nelio's counting some fingers <laughs> here. <laughs> Twins the right. Okay, okay. So if, if I if I get force of nature, savage roar, innervate, savage roar, how much damage is it if the shade gets buffed by one? It's a lot of math, Crib. I got to be honest with you. Okay, I think it's twenty nine. Thirty one, I think. Right? I think it's twenty nine. Isn't it twenty two from from the right. force roar roar and then oh, you're right. It gets double nine. roar. Yeah, so, so it's, it's thirty one. It's, it's plus nine from the shade. Yeah. All right, you got me. Ha ha. Kibler one, Crip zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So yeah, I mean, and and right now Nelio is currently at thirty seven. If he plays shield the maiden and armors up, he goes he's to forty three. <laughs> he's safe. So he's, he's. I think he can survive. And it looks like he uh, CX is like, Please make also stop. did the math. <laughs> and is like, oh, well, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. The facial expressions are so radically different. Like, yeah. am I safe now? Am I safe? Yeah. yeah I think uh, the only way that Love CX could look to muscle through all this armor, it would have to start with Emperor Thorazan. Mm -hmm. And even then, because you've already seen one force of nature, it's kind of not really. I mean, he needs to find his other, his other ancient. Like, he really needs to actually get multiple minions that are able to stay on the board for multiple turns and keep attacking. He, his his road <laughs> to victory here, well, it certainly isn't Innervate. That certainly isn't it. Right. Uh, though it, we, we basically just removed Wild Growth <laughs> from our hands this turn. <laughs> I mean, the, the key it's really zero is... Zero mana discard Wild Growth. <laughs> yeah. The, the key really is not going to be burst damage with Force of Nature. It's going to be actually establishing a board presence and attacking mm -hmm. yep. multiple times. You don't you don't burst down yeah, somebody who's at 50 left. So... Be curious to see if he finally trades in the shade. Mm, nah. Uh, I mean, we, he really needs to. Oh, it looks like. Oh, what, what was that, Chris? Let's keep it around. What was that? He traded. <laughs> he saw how much trouble the uh, the warrior had earlier against just the bear. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's banking on this. And like. This is that same death spike, by the way. This has been just around since turn right. four, and he yeah, has another death spike in his two hand. Death too. Spikes. <laughs> Oh, you gotta value your weapons. Yeah, yeah. You know, just throw them around all willy nilly. <laughs> um, well, there's two plays here. There's there's the Geddon, but that leaves you vulnerable to a BGH, and a huge tempo swing is probably the only way things start going south. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a bigger risk than than you really should be taking at this point. That's why I like the slam or the cruel task a lot better. Yeah, I I agree with that. I th I think I think Nilio maybe you know, trying to figure out okay what in the world can go wrong here. Yeah, because it's very clear that he is in a commanding position in this game. And uh, I think that he's you know, trying to think of what are the worst case scenarios that Love CX can do that he needs to react to. Does he need to perhaps save this slam? Uh, looks like he is going, I believe, with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, very good. Going. Okay. He can start pushing damage with this, so I, I completely understand this play. If mm, there is no big yeah. game hunter, but he there can is. start pushing it. Right. But why take, why take that risk is the interesting point, right? No, I, I think that's completely fair. Maybe maybe Nilio has Big Game Hunter, or not Big Game Hunter, but Dr. Boom in his lineup, so you just get it out of the way. Yeah, and, and this is this is now suddenly the Love start CX of a has a board. Yeah. You know, we were, we were right. just saying, in order to win this game, Love CX needs to establish multiple minions and allow them to stay in play for multiple turns. And, and now N that's exactly is expecting what's really bad things to happen to him. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, he might over remove this board. He might do something crazy like that spike, cruel task, slam the BGH. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, he's given so much credit to Love CX for having just a ridiculous combo. Mm -hmm. It's it's possible that that swipe play from Love CX really just threw Nelio off into thinking mm -hmm. that he had a combination of cards in his hand that just weren't there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see now if he actually just chooses to do something like Death by Cruel Taskmaster to get rid of the Sludge Belcher. Doesn't really feel like that's what you necessarily want to do, but. Now, now, as we pointed out, Nelio is at the point where he has to start getting rid of minions, mm -hmm. where for a long time he wasn't. Mm -hmm. He was just on this plan where he was just like, oh, let's get to armor up. Life's great. Yeah, he just got to relax. <laughs> yeah. he, you know, there's nothing really in play. He was just very, very relaxed. And Slam on the Sludge Belcher. Will draw a card. And then Death Spite takes it out. Okay. When yeah, you have the tank up ability, you, you're, you're never going to use that over playing a shield block, even, even though your hand might be pretty bad. 
tank up is, is the uh, the choice here, leaving him at a comfortable 45 health. This is how it starts to get bad, though, if Nelia doesn't find a brawl. Ooh, wow. Wow. this is a pretty, a pretty good draw there. <laughs> Though interestingly, if uh, Love CX were to play Lothab and Nelio did have Brawl, he could still spend the full 10 mana to play. He's also, I think, I think a good one. Good right, I think he's still one or two turns off of uh, Lethal, even with the Savage Roar. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe he realizes he doesn't need to commit to it just yet. I think we'll probably see the the attack with the Death Spite, maybe with Cruel Taskmaster to finish off the big game Hunter, uh, then maybe Sludge Belcher and Armorsmith to sort of keep things secure. I truly wouldn't be surprised if Grom hits the Drake after that. Yeah, it's also possible. I mean, it doesn't even—it doesn't even need to be enraged from the Death Spite hit. At, at the end of the turn, you mm -hmm. can get a nine-five in play, and you've already been BGH'd once. Yeah, it's true. And I'm pretty sure Nilio realizes that. You know, we've been as we've been saying, the only way he loses the game at this point is if Love CX can develop a board and start pushing with you know a second combo, or just a Savage Roar with like four or five minions on the board. Mm -hmm. So, uh, using Grom right here. To get rid of the Drake doesn't feel particularly bad to me. I must choose. Yep, it seems, um, it seems, uh, seems good to me as well. Get rid of that. Put down the Grom. You've already seen the big game, Hunter. Yeah, and here it comes. Grom is going to take out Azure Drake. Role playing as a boom bot. <laughs> <laughs> no! Azure Drake, run! It did hit it for four. It did, yeah. <sighs> Sigh. Azure Drake, you were so young. Yeah. He had so much promise. And I, I really feel like Love CX is probably really regretting not playing Lothab now. And now he's in a position where uh, he doesn't really have a clean way to contest this Grom without investing a lot of resources. Uh, he could use his Savage Roar and perhaps his Keeper of the Grove to clear the board. Uh, that still leaves him in a pretty awkward spot where he doesn't have much in play. And this is his... his uh, oh, nearly is so relieved. He's like, okay, yeah. I won the game. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Time to just tank up until fatigue. Yeah. yeah. This is, uh, he really needed that second force of nature. Uh, there's a world where Savage Roar can still possibly get it done, but I... Oh, and, and now this Alex is a good aggressive you. I know you don't have Big Game Hunter, and you Look are Look at that druid, sigh of so. relief from Neil. Yeah. He's, he's just, he sort of has this moment of, of recognition. Oh, that, that's a little uh, bit of worry, though, yeah. introduced to the equation here. Does complicate things, but Nilio, he's still at 38, and he's still a shield block, sludge belcher, and armor smith in his hand. Do you just like innervate out the Lothab now? You just need to put power on the board, maybe. I, I think you, I think you might. Uh, it looks like he goes with piloted shredder. I'm curious what exactly he's saving Lothab for. Uh, not playing it aggressively so many turns in a row now suggests that he's saving it for a specific spell situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he kind of smiled there for a minute, understanding that he's he's gonna be able to remove this. He has the Oxtraza to push damage. And there, that that shield slam is able to take out the ancient. Still is able to tank up Alexstraza, Ghost Face. I thought for a minute the uh, the target on shield slam was the face of the druid. So he's like, ha! Finally found my gotcha. shield slam. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> there are some cards you guys have introduced recently that does enable that play. Uh, if you're a warlock. Yeah. yeah. Or have if you have uh, Shredder. Right, here we go. Here we go. It's time for the last Savage Roar of the Druid. And there, we're going to see Alex Straza sadly die. Poor dragon. I was going to say, that must upset you more than it upset it, it's, it's It's truly tragic. Are they addressing the Azure Drake, too? Now, as bad as it is looking for uh, the Druid, um, Nelio doesn't really have anything right now. Yeah. He has a shield block. That's another card. Could actually draw lead. Oh. Hey, look, more dragons. Hey, I, I'm happy again. <laughs> this dragon will surely survive. <laughs> well, it, it is it is a uh, 12 health minion. It, it, it very often survives. Uh, more importantly, it's also glowing and I, I think throwing up dreams. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, what goes on is that she dreams and the world trembles. I mean, I see that, but it looks like she's shooting lasers out of her mouth. Hey, that's kind of true. Okay, fair. Hey, I'm down if you're down. Let's shoot some lasers. And so... Yeah, the uh, not many cards left in Love CX's deck. Only four cards remaining. So it is it is very possible that uh, that Nelio can actually just run Love CX entirely out of resources in this entire hmm. game. Especially considering he'll be drawing essentially two cards a turn because of Ysera. Love CX is uh, drawn more cards. Than he's and not. there's a Wrath. That's only three cards left. Refreshment Vendor. Yeah, I remember that card. Yeah, it was kind of the weird addition that Love CX put in, but actually led to him being in a favorable situation one game. Mm -hmm. 
that he won. Okay. That part's important too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a reaction from Nino. What? <laughs> what? What? No, he was probably very upset because he didn't actually throw a funnel cake. The reaction was based on the fact, like, <laughs> but that's chicken. Is this getting fixed? I don't time? understand. Uh, that's not a funnel cake at all. But this is something like <laughs> refresher uh, vendor lies. <laughs> wow. No, yeah, beat it. It's very sad. Only this is our town scrub. He didn't have his friend. So at one point, uh, this I was Nax no Ramus, and then it's also just his town. Yeah. Oh, the dream is going to make quick work of that, though. It's going to make quick work of Love CX's dream, perhaps, of <laughs> remaining in this tournament. I think that Love yeah, CX's yeah. dream has already taken many hits. I think oh, yeah. his, his hopes are quite low at this stage in the game. The, the dream is not much of a reality. There goes Sylvanas, Sylvanas why don't you just, the hand. Why don't you just chill out there, Sylvanas? So Sylvanas is going to go back to hand, and yeah. Uh, Nilio, a couple points of damage off of this, though. So. Yeah, pushing for face here is really important, as uh, if the Sylvanas does have any oh, chance. Nilio is <laughs> super there. relieved. And you see him pumped up here. Is there another Drew the Claw left in Love CX? Oh, Ysera oh, is waking off of the Ysera. That is, that's quite the dream, and that is going to be enough. Nothing, none of these cards from Love CX's hand. He can play the Sylvanas, and he would be able to steal that Ysera, but... Not enough life, and that is it. The game is over, and Nilio will be moving on to remain in this tournament. Yeah, after a rough series of games with that That's Hunter right. deck, he uh, manages to get the win on the Hunter, and then get the win in a matchup where, you know, obviously the Druid has to be the favorite, but uh, as happens sometimes when you run a deck with so many spells, Love CX just drew into them. He never really got a foothold against the Warrior, and the Warrior was basically just able to run him out with a uh, tank up. Yeah. Uh, we, we did see a bunch of turns in the middle of that game where Love CX sort of struggled to find anything to do proactively. He just he's had, he just pointed yeah, a, a swipe at his face. Way too. He just literally exactly. pointed a swipe at Nilio's face because that was his only real option to use his mana. And uh, ultimately, Nilio was able to run Love CX out of resources and take the game. Yeah, that was just uh, very, very awkward draws from the Druid. But overall, the series was, I feel, excellent. It was very good. Um, even, even though Love CX couldn't quite uh, stay in the tournament, I suppose, uh, he did have a, a pretty good show. Uh, I think he played very well. He showed us some pretty cool decks. Uh, I like the refreshment vendor tech personally. Oh, I'm a big fan. I know, I know there's some refreshment haters out there. <laughs> I just want him to actually throw a funnel. <laughs> I just want to eat a funnel cake. Does. They're delicious. Right now, after this, we just go get funnel cakes. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm in. Sure. All right. Well, uh, let's go get a winner's interview instead. Uh, Rachel has that for us. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's not quite Funnel Cakes, but I'm here with Nilio, and uh, that last game was, I don't like to use the word disgusting, but that was pretty gross what you did with the armor there. So uh, talk me through from your perspective, that final match. Um, actually, the, the last match, I, you know, like, Culture Warrior versus Drew. Drew is obviously his favorite most of the time, and he got a dream hand. He got white growth into turn three, entering the law. I was like, oh my god. I, I thought that my BlizzCon dream uh, just end like after that turn, but uh, and then I got some I, I got some decent top deck with uh, Aqualife Pain into uh, Execute and you know like into turn six uh, Justica and I got all the ammo in the wound and you know like. Basically, uh, you when you when you play control the world versus truth, you just 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 need to grind them out. Like, mm, just don't take too much damage, and you win because of uh, so you don't have enough damage to kill you. That's a solid strategy there. Now, in an interview with Gosu Gamers, you said that you're more of a points collector and less of a pro gamer, but you did really want to make it to BlizzCon, so. Do you think if you were to make it all the way to the BlizzCon finals, you might consider the pro gaming career? Yeah, uh, probably because I, like I said, like, like I said in the interview with uh, Gosu Gamer, I I wasn't into some small tournaments because like I would just I just didn't like any small tournaments at all. I, but uh, this tournament. Is really huge. Like that's a lot of money on the line, and you know, like uh, to win BlizzCon, it probably is everyone's dream. And if I win BlizzCon, probably, you know, maybe I would become a pro gamer. Maybe. Well, we would look forward to that very much. Thank you, Nilio. I'm gonna hand it back to our casters. Thank you, Rachel. 
Uh, of course, we are three elimination matches in. We do have a closer coming up. It is going to uh, it is going to continue. Some players, their dream will have to end, but uh, as we saw with Nelios, they will continue in a big way. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of glad the way things are working out. It seems uh, the people who are still in contention um, really, really deserve to be there. Uh, we've got some great players here you know, who are doing very well. It's a great players, unfortunately, had to lose as well. Uh, but we have uh, one more match today and then still two more days of matches before we decide who will be playing on the BlizzCon stage. Yeah, obviously, uh, to make it this far, huge accomplishment. Playing on the you know, main stage of the Hearthstone World Championship with some of the best players in the world. Uh, I don't know. I don't think you can be disappointed if you lose here. Uh, at this point, whoever wins obviously plays really well, but all of the other people they've played against in their own right have played super well, and it's not like we've had any series that have just been complete blowouts. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, hope you guys had a good tournament so far. Uh, just a quick shout-out to our sponsors for making the event happen. Uh, you know... Everything, everything happens with the help of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of sources, and in the end, we uh, we have a very good show for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And before we get to our next match, uh, let's just have a quick look at the highlights from that last match uh, to see some of the cool things that went down. And of course, that's brought to you by the Windows 10 Game DVR.